Y'all know what time it is. It's Tip Tuesday! Or should I have said trips? Looking to take your Madden game to the next level while dominating kids in Weekend League and learn high-level schemes from some of the best Madden pros in the world? Make sure you check out Hot Route Tips and use code CHAOS for 10% off at checkout. What's good, everybody? Chaos here, and welcome to part two of our Gun Trips Tight End Mini Scheme. Last time I brought you guys PA Counter Go, and if you guys didn't see it, man, was it steaming, guys. It's a very, very effective play. If you guys want to check that out, it's going to be in the cards above me, I believe, right here. And this is going to be part two to that, so we're going to be adding on to that. Again, guys, we are in the Miami Dolphins playbook. And if you didn't know, my ebook over on HotRoute.Tips just dropped. It's also out of the Miami Dolphins playbook. It's primarily focus on split close but this trip sign is another great scheme that you guys can have if you guys don't want to buy the ebook that's cool this scheme is going to be very effective for you we're going to kind of close it up today leading into a gameplay next week but if you guys want to buy the ebook this is just a great add-on to it with two great passing formations that you can use but getting into today's video guys i asked for 300 likes last time on the pa counter go video and you guys knocked out in about an hour so today I'm giving you guys PA Shout Wheel, you guys see right here, as well as the RPO Bubble Screen right here. Very, very good, effective plays. We'll be breaking down how we're going to implement them in today's video. But if we get 300 likes on this video, we're going to be implementing them all into a gameplay where I break down both my split close and my gun trips tight end and kind of my thought process on offense. It's what I call chaos coaching. So if we get 300 likes once again, which I'm sure you guys are just going to crush the way you guys always do, I'll drop that for you guys, kind of completing the entire mini scheme for you. But all right, fellas, I'm going to be breaking down a lot in this video. So I'm going to give you guys timestamps once again. We're going to be going over some personnel, audibles, and a couple different plays. So I will be giving you guys timestamps. I know you guys love your timestamps. So I'll give them to you guys once again. But we're going to be starting off today with the PA shot wheel. So we're going to be starting with this. This is the, probably the second best passing play behind PA counter go. Arguably maybe the best passing play from it. There's a lot of different things you can do. But first and foremost, for your personnel, you're going to want your best deep route runner right here at the B spot where the crosser was from PA counter go. This is where you want your best deep route runner, so I have Marcus Goodwin there. You want your, probably your second best receiver right here, so I put Pettis, 91 speed, not a bad player whatsoever. And then outside, just probably put the best speed guy that you have there that's also a decent receiver, Debo Samuel will do. So we're going to get in the shot wheel. I'm just going to go against different coverages here. We'll start off in Tampa 2. And we'll kind of just break this down route by route. So there's uh, two different routes in this play that we really like to utilize. First and foremost, the crosser. The crosser is pretty good from this play. And then the wheel route. The wheel route's going to kill, man. It's going to do some decent things against zone. And I'll show you guys that. But let's start with the crosser. So here's the setup for the play. What you're going to do is drag X, the outside guy, and then streak A, the tight end. And then you're going to re-block the running back. I don't like PA this year. If they have contains, you're going to get hollered at. And this is the play. Now you're going to be motioning Y, but you're not going to motion him all the way to the other side of the field. You're going to motion him to right about, like right before he's at B, and you're going to hike in. And it's going to beat every zone. So they're in Tampa 2. You're going to see this crosser is going to get over the cloud. So you hike it right about there. And bam, right over the cloud. Perfect spot, right? Nice little pocket. The deep blue is pushed back by the streak, and it's just in a nice little area for you. I'll just throw this a couple times just so you guys can see it. Showing you guys that it's pretty consistent. It's going to get over the cloud pretty much every single time. Now, you got a little bit bumped there. If he, does, if he does get a little bumped and you feel like maybe they're getting pressure on you, maybe they're about to shed, something like that, you can always take your drag underneath. So I'll show you there. On that play, since he got bumped the way that he did, I probably would have just taken my drag underneath because it does sit in a nice little spot right over the middle of the field here. As you see, he crosses. Bam, right there. I probably would have hit my drag. And that's probably six or seven yards, right? But... I did have time, so I was able to fit that crosser in. I'll throw the crosser one more time against cover two, and then we'll jump into uh, cover three. So again, drag on the outside, streak the tight end, motion him over right there, and he's gonna get to a really, really nice spot on the field. You see, he gets just above that cloud, and Gilmore's not a slouch corner by any means. He's not the best zone corner in the game, but he's pretty darn good, and it's getting over, and he's not being able to react to it in time. So now, let's get into cover three. I'll show you guys uh, cover three here with hard flats first. So I'll baseline press it just so you can get as far outside as possible. Baseline press is probably gonna do the best job against it because it can possibly get him to squat. But since you have that streak over there, it's gonna push him back and he's gonna have enough time to throw it. So it's a nice little spot right there. Don't have to low ball it. In the last video, we were low balling counter go. This one, since you do the motion, it takes him just like a half step sooner to get there. 
and you don't have to low ball. Now you can, if you're scared, like if you feel like you need to fit in the throw, maybe they put a deep quarter out there, which I will go over. You might want to low ball it just to make sure you can fit it in, but against the cover three, you don't have to. So I'll show it one more time here against the cover three. And then guys, we're going to eventually just start working into the other routes in the play. I just want to show you guys how good this crosser is. And then we can we'll be talking about the other stuff afterwards. But right here, again, perfect spot on the field. That's with a purple. Still doesn't play it. Gets to a really nice spot on the field. But that purple is another reason why you might not want to low ball it just in case. Because you don't your drag doesn't get over there to pull it down soon enough that if you low ball it, he could probably play it. So you see here. On the counter go play, we had the out route from the tight end, which would pull down the purple immediately. But since you don't have the drag over there yet, it takes a second to get there. Obviously, we can throw our drag since he's not coming down on it. It takes him a second to come down. He kind of squats in between. But if you low ball it, he can probably jump and get that. But without the low ball, he's not going to get to it, especially not this year with the way DBs and linebackers jump. So that's the crossing route. And I'll quickly show you guys. A deep quarter does have a chance at playing it. But if they baseline press deep quarter here like this, you're going to be able to bomb it over the top with Kittle on a streak. Um, it doesn't even really matter too much how fast the guy is. He's going to squat so far underneath that you can basically just bomb it here. And you see there, like, if they do that, you're going to have space to throw it out. They, if they put a deep quarter and a deep quarter there, or like a deep third right and moved out to, towards the tight end side, maybe you can't bomb it. But you can still throw this crossing route uh, a lot of the time. You just have to low ball and kind of have to be worried about it. So baseline press with the deep third here, and I'll, I'll put... Uh, I'll put Chung in this deep third here and put this guy on the hard flat like that just to show you guys that you can stop that bomb but if they do you can still fit this crossing route in underneath so right here you see him squatting but if you low ball it you can glitch him out like I did on counter go I went more in depth on the low ball in the last video if you guys haven't seen that make sure you check it out but that's the that's the crossing route guys now I'm gonna break down what you can do with the wheel and there's several different things you can do with the wheel out of this play all right so let's get into the wheel now same setup guys, literally the same exact thing. Drag the outside guys, streak Kittle, and you're gonna do the same motion. Now, I'm gonna low ball this, this wheel route a lot. This is Tampa 2. I'll show you guys what you can do against Tampa 2 with this low ball. And you're gonna wanna low ball it with like a left stick down and to the right, like around five o'clock or so. And you're gonna be able to fit it in between any zone. So right here, I'm just gonna show you guys the same exact setup here. I'm gonna low ball it. And you see there, I didn't even get a good pass. That's probably the first time or one of the first times I've actually thrown that and gotten an accurate pass. But you see he kind of just cuts off the cloud flat and gets to a really nice spot. So I'll show it again here. Hopefully I'll get a better pass from uh, Garoppolo. And that's the pass you want right there. So it's about five o'clock pass lead with a low pass and you can glitch him inside of the cloud, but he doesn't uh, quite get to the bird hook, so it doesn't really get played. And I'll show you guys how to baseline and um, regular press as well. You see here, you get a perfect pass lead and it kind of gets right in between those zones. Really, really nice spot on the field. Pretty safe pass as long as he's not manned up. So again, show it to you guys, and this time I'll do a, a baseline. Show you guys that it still gets there. Perfect little pocket. Free eight, eight nine yards, right? It's really safe play too, because that guy has really no chance of getting to it. And you guys saw when I threw an inaccurate pass, he kind of just sat in front of it and didn't allow him to even make a play on it. Show it one more time here, and then we can move on to the uh, other things that you can do with this with this wheel route. And you see another inaccurate pass, but it's safe. If it's inaccurate, they're not going to pick it. It's not like an inaccurate high pass where it could just sail over and go right to a deep blue. So that's it against uh, cover two. Let's go into cover three here. So against cover three, you're not going to be able to fit it in with that low pass because the hard flat's going to be out there. But a lot of the time you guys probably see people like the blitz out of cover three, right? Maybe they do this. Then you can do the same thing from it. So it's like a hot read for you. So if people are blitzing, you obviously have your drag as a hot read, but you also are gonna have this wheel route. So if I see that now, I didn't mean to keep the, the PA. You don't wanna do that. But if you see the, they send their flat zone, you can quickly just pass that to the wheel. Really, really nice for you. Um, so another, another hot read for you. So you have that hot read, but if they come in and blitz here off that, and you don't want to throw the wheel route, maybe maybe you are just scared of throwing a pick on it or something, you don't want to throw the wheel route, you can hot, uh, hot read the drag, bam, right there. Two really nice reads, as well as the seam streak. So if they blitz you, they blitz you this way, just send a six this way, you could probably uh, seam streak them as well. So you have three hot reads versus the blitz on this play, but then you also have three zones that are really, uh, excuse me, three routes that are really, really good against um, against zones. So like you're going to be able to be coverage, but you're also going to be able to be blitzes with this because you have three hot reads on the play. So it's really nice. 
Sorry about that guys, unexpected cut. Now I just got finished showing you guys how good the wheel and the crosser were against Zone. Now I can show you guys against Mam and uh, show you guys that it's gonna crush cover zero and cover one. So I'm gonna overstorm Brave here. And this wheel route is the reason why I had you guys put your best deep route winner here. If you have over 85 on all Madden or over 90 on all pro, it's gonna make you beat guys deep on man pretty much every single time. Now something you might wanna note is Gilmore does have a man of ability. It can make him play it like every once in a while. But it's so rare you guys probably won't even see it on this video um, but just note that if he does get a weird bump it can cause him to play it better now the rest of this play is not gonna be bad against a uh, man either you have the drag which is if it doesn't get pressed too bad it'll get open if it does get pressed it won't you have a motion crosser that can't get pressed because it's motioned now Pettis isn't great so it'll probably actually be bagged by it but if you have a better receiver here it's gonna get open you just have to trust that and you can also usually lowball it to try to fit it in but I probably wouldn't risk throwing it. I'll try to show you guys that on this part of the video. But also note, if I knew they were in cover zero, don't streak Kittle. You can out route them, or you can check and release them if you want some extra blocking. Either or guys, whatever you want to do. If you want to just get extra blocking though, don't block them because the person man to him will blitz. So check and release will stay out in coverage and give you some extra time. But we can pretend here that we don't know that they're in cover zero and just run the play like with the normal setup because it's going to do a good job against cover zero regardless because of this wheel. You see here, beat some way deep and you get yourself a nice easy free touchdown now the zone that did come over is the deep third because he's manned to the running back when the the running backs block the guy will just go into a zone from the safety position so he's in the deep third but plenty of space there and you don't even have to lob it the way i did you can just bullet pass it and it gets in there I'll show you guys one more time against overstorm brave and then i'll uh, also show you guys against press that's going to do a pretty good job of getting deep so and that's the bump I was talking about. That bump right there, if he gets a good enough bump, can cause him to, to get guarded. Now, he still gets burnt because of the route running, but I'm telling you, every once in a while, it'll bump him and he won't get guarded. So, you guys have to see it there. And that's the, uh, that's the bump I was talking about. So, just something to look out for, but he burned him there anyways. Now, I'll press. And you guys will see, when you do this press, this crosser's gonna bump Gilmore. So, it's gonna cause him to not even be in the play most of the time. And if he doesn't get bumped, like right there, he's just going to get beat deep anyways. So it's really just um, pick your poison. So the wheel is going to beat him regardless. But usually when you do this motion, you can make him get bumped. I'll try to create it here. Um, it was happening pretty consistently uh, pretty much every time I've been doing this. But even if he doesn't get bumped, that's why you have the wheel there. So try to do it one more time here. Haven't been able to create the bump, but you guys are seeing the wheels beating it every time. You guys don't need to see it anymore. Just note that Crosser can bump Gilmore, get him to press him. And then he just the wheel just crushed him to the sideline because he's stuck inside. So now I'll try to show you guys the uh, rest of this play against Man. Do note though that if you have a better receiver here, he'll probably do a better job on this motion crosser than Pettis will, and you just have to trust that. And here we go. So he got he actually bumped the crosser right there, and that's what I'm talking about the low ball. That's what I wanted to show you. So that wasn't open, right? Like he was completely boxed because Pettis just he isn't that fast compared to the the really good uh, New England corners. New England has very fast corners, probably the best corners in the game. And so he gets bagged on this, but you can lowball it and cut the guy off and get a perfect animation on it. That's what I was talking about before. That's what I wanted to show you. And then I don't need to show you guys the drag. I mean, it's clear if he gets a good press, he's not going to get open. If he doesn't get a good press, you can probably throw it. And you can probably throw that right there for a few yards. But the best part about this play against man is the wheel route. It's going to get open deep most of the time. So that's PA shot wheel. Now we'll quickly jump into the uh, rest of the RPO and just show you guys how it can kind of round out the scheme for you. But there's definitely some different things that you can do out of this formation that's very, very effective. So you guys see here, we're in the RPO zone alert bubble. Now, if they're in a cover two, this bubble is usually gonna get open. As long as Samuel and Pettis block, Goodwin's gonna have a free lane to the sidelines because it's cover two and they're gonna both be taken away. And the, the slot corner is not gonna be in a flat zone. The flat zone will usually follow the bubble out, but since he's in a vert, he'll drop back a little bit. And then you still have the, the great part of the inside zone where you get a nice little run that's hard to shoot the gap on, especially because of this uh, RPO. So call it here, they're in cover two. You see, we get out to the sideline. Now, if that safety gets blocked, I'm probably off to the races, but right there, we get a free five, six, seven, eight yards. And I'll just keep throwing this against cover two, just so you guys can see how effective it is. Take your five yards, it's basically just a second part of your run. So you're either running up the middle or you're running to the screen, right? It's like, it's just a basic run play. You're not, you're not gonna expect to pick up a ton of yards on this. But if you hand the ball off, you can be successful. And if you throw the RPO, it can be successful. I'm not going to show you too much of this, guys. You guys really can get it. 
um it's really simple if the guys block for you your rpo can pick you up a good chunk if they don't you'll usually get three to four or five yards anyways i'll show you guys first press now but it's a pretty simple read you really just watch and see if the uh the, the slot corners get picked up or not and you can either hand it off or not pretty simple now you do have to throw it a little bit earlier than you do against um from single back because the inside zone is rather quick but if they block out there you guys see like there's tons of space now if they don't block yeah you might lose a yard here or there but you usually do okay and you usually will get decent blocking now that was a perfect example of i need to get the ball out quick because i'm actually used to single back rpos more and with that you don't have to you can probably like wait and make your read a little bit uh like later but right here you guys see one-on-one -on -one, chance to pick up a big chunk of yards and you can do that but just note you do need to get the ball out quick because that inside zone does happen quickly but you guys see this inside zone is very effective there's a lot of space to work and if you have a good running back you can make a one-on-one -on -one, and you guys you guys know if you have bojacks and you have gale sayers you can make one guy miss or, or or break one tackle very very easily in this game and that's all you need man you'll be off to the races very very quickly if you have someone like that but that's the rest of the scheme guys i went over the uh the personnel we went over the the two best passing lit plays in my opinion pa shot wheel and pa counter go and then we have this rpo uh zone bubble which is very effective for you i hope you guys like this scheme Again, we will be doing a gameplay where I use not only this, but my split close and show you guys how I kind of go through my thought process on offense, why I called a certain play, what I'm seeing from the defense that made me do a certain route combo, something, everything along that nature. That's what I'll be breaking down for you later this week. 300 likes, you guys are going to crush it. I don't even need to ask for it. It's super easy for you. But that's it, man. I hope you guys enjoyed. Take it easy. Peace.